When Mark and Jane arrived in Edinburgh, they discovered that Mark had left his camera on the train. At the lost and found office, he has to fill in a lost property form. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Yeah, I think I left my camera on the train from London early today. Did you, sir? Oh well. In that case, we'd better fill in a lost property form. Can you tell me your name? Yeah, it's Mark Adams. Uh -huh. Okay.、Uh, your address? You mean in Britain or in the States?、Uh, how long are you staying? Oh, I've still got a few months in Britain. Okay, then can you give me your address here? Right. It's twenty-one,、uh, Thames Drive,、uh, Lee on C. That's L E I G H、uh, on C, Essex. <laughs> Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. Do you want the phone number?、Uh, yes, I'd better have that. Okay, o seven o two, three five two double one. Thanks. And you say it was a camera. What make and model? It's a Rico. Rico. How do you spell that? R I C O H. Okay, got that. Now you say it was the London train. What time did it arrive in Edinburgh? At four fifty-five this afternoon, exactly on time. Ah、uh, well, then if we find it, sir, shall we phone you? No, I think I'll drop in the day after tomorrow to check up. Ah,、uh, right you are, sir. We'll do our best. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to listen to a talk about the food we eat. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Welcome to the food we eat, sponsored by Safeway. Increasingly, we know more about the effects of our eating habits and lifestyles on our health. While new information can change old ideas. The news stories can often be confusing. At Safeway, we try to help customers not only in the range and types of food offered, but also by providing up-to-date, reliable information 
in areas we know are of interest and which relate to the diet we eat. Today we are going to talk about sugar. Recently, doctors have been advising us to eat less sugar. The health recommendation to use less sugar is for two reasons. Firstly, for the sake of our teeth, since the amount and frequency of sugar consumption links to decay. Secondly, as sugar is a good source of calories, it can easily be a problem if we tend to be overweight. The dental risk is because bacteria which occur naturally in our mouth feed on carbohydrates, sugar and starch, to form plaque and acid. Plaque is a sticky coating that prevents the bacteria being removed by saliva. The acid attacks the tooth itself. This takes time, however, so the trick is to avoid sticky foods like sweets, which stay around in crevices feeding the bacteria. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Regular brushing, preferably with a fluoride toothpaste, helps remove particles and resist acid. The worst thing you can do is nibble sweet things between meals. It puts your teeth under constant attack. A sweet tooth develops gradually. And you might be surprised at how you can steadily unlearn the taste, taking in fewer calories and saving your teeth. Here are some ways. A. Gradually cut down the sugar in tea and coffee till you can stop altogether or switch to sweetness. B. Choose snacks with a lower sugar content. Fresh fruit, raw vegetables, crackers. Milk or low-flat natural yoghurt. Remember, some fruits like raisins have lots of sugar. C. Look for reduced sugar alternatives. There are more and more around, from diet drinks to yoghurts, even jams and sauces. D. Try gradually to cut back on the sugar you use in cooking, especially in baking. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 3 As part of our lecture series on everyday health issues, today's talk is on tiredness. We shall look at the main issues in turn, as well as some of the main research that has been carried out in this field. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Good morning. As part of our lecture series on everyday health issues, today's talk is on tiredness. We shall look at the main issues in turn, as well as some of the main research that has been carried out in this field. Firstly, it is clear that tiredness is on the rise. No official data exists on the rate of people reporting to doctors with recurring tiredness, 
but it's a very common complaint. Research suggests that people are not relaxing properly and often work when they do not have enough energy. Furthermore, products to boost energy are also on the rise. Sales of so-called energy drinks loaded with caffeine and sugar have grown by 23% over the last year. And this is not the only instance of an increase in products claiming to boost energy. Guarana, a herbal stimulant, can now be found in everything from chocolate bars to tea bags. Now let's examine what it is that's making people so tired. Dr Liebhold, a Sydney GP, has done extensive research into this and he believes that financial pressures, not taking holidays and not having time off when you become ill due to fear of losing your job are all common causes. Some of the other suggested causes are low oxygen levels in offices, poor diet or illness. The problem is that tiredness is a symptom of just about every kind of illness, which makes tracking down the cause all the more difficult. The next question to ask is, are people getting enough sleep? Dr Mansfield from Melbourne's Epworth Sleep Centre, who specialises in sleep disorders, says insomnia often arises when people are going through a stressful period. Mansfield often needs to re-educate people in how to get off to sleep. He recommends keeping your body clock regular by going to bed and rising at similar times every day and not drinking too much caffeine. And there is some truth in the old story about having a glass of hot milk before bed. Milk contains the amino acid tryptophan, which has been shown to help induce sleepiness. Turning to the question of why we need sleep, researchers are still trying to answer this fundamental question. Sleep deprivation experiments have shown that after 14 days without sleep, rats will lie down and die. And after only three days' sleep loss, humans get confused, forgetful and start having hallucinations. So whatever sleep does, it is important. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. However, not all researchers feel the same way. Trent Watson of the Dietitians Association is not convinced by McMahon's theory, explaining that our bodies don't really like to burn protein as a fuel, so it doesn't really contribute to energy levels. Carbohydrates, however, found in fruit, breads and pastas, are a more common fuel. Anyone following a rigidly high-protein diet with low carbohydrates, even if they are operating at low intensity during the day, could subject themselves to fatigue because they just don't have the carbohydrate stores, Watson says. In general, a good way to stay energised from a dietary point of view is to eat red meat, green leafy vegetables and whole grains. These foods give red blood cells the building blocks for optimum performance in their role of delivering oxygen to muscles. To sum up, tiredness is a health problem on the increase and there continues to be much debate surrounding its causes and remedies. Now, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear an introduction about the tutorial courses of the physics school. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Orientation Week. This is the Physics School session, and we'll welcome Professor Smith, the head of the school, to introduce you to the tutorial system. Welcome, Professor Smith. Thank you. You may have noticed life at university is totally different from that of school. For you, tutorials are an important part of the teaching program. Tutors are the primary contact between undergraduate students and the school. A tutor is the student's personal tutor as well as their academic tutor. Tutorials for physics undergraduates consist of six students who meet each week with their tutor for at least 50 minutes. For radiographer students, tutorials will normally consist of a group of about 10 students who will meet fortnightly with their tutor for a period of at least 50 minutes. In the first semester, the tutorials are during weeks 1 to 11. For semester 2, they are during weeks 14 to 24. Everybody involved is expected to be present and on time, and the tutor will also be available in week 12 and 25 to discuss problems that arise during revision. But attendance by students is optional. Now I'm going to introduce to you the stages and activities of the tutorials. The induction period is from week 1 to 3. I know that a significant minority of you experience culture shock during your first few months at university, and the important function of this stage is to identify students who are having difficulty integrating into the academic program. In particular, tutors should check your attendance of lectures, tutorials, laboratory sessions, and this sort of things. Tutors also help you tackle work in a systematic and effective manner. Stage 2 begins from the fourth week. Some tutorials of this period are to be devoted to discussion or going over the student's lecture notes, but approximately 50% of tutorial time is to be devoted to coursework. You should finish the weekly homework assignments of two hours duration with at least 50% involving written work. At least eight homework assignments during the year should involve answering problems set on coursework. The written work collected by the tutor should be marked within a week of handing in, and generally the assignments should be graded. The third stage starts from week 8 till the 10th. During this period, math and four core physics programs are included. The majority of tutorial time should be devoted to work which supports the lecture programs and laboratory work. At least 60% of homework assignments should involve written work. The assignment may involve writing an account of, or notes on, a specified range of topics. The written work should also be marked and graded. Short oral presentations by students should be included. They are possibly on general physics topics or essays. The last week's personal development planning is a structured and supported process. The primary objective for PDP is to help you to become more independent and confident, self-directed learners and encourage a positive attitude to learning throughout life. It is undertaken by yourselves to reflect upon their own learning, performance and achievement and to plan for their personal educational and career development. Finally, if without evidence of good reason you miss more than two sessions during a semester, or if the tutor is not satisfied with your progress, the matter must be immediately referred to the program director who will normally issue formal warning, verbal and written. This will inform you that your place at university is under threat of withdrawal if no improvement is made. That is the end of part four. Mm.